When you're first setting up your 4 pi microscope, you really want to confirm that your computer is connected with all the PI stages and everything is working as expected before you do anything else. So after you've physically connected all the PI controllers to your computer, the first thing you want to do is run PI Micromove, which is the software that ships with the stages. You can think of PI Micromove as a one-stop shop for PI stage control. PI Micromove also lets you easily reference all the stage axes, which you definitely want to do before you begin. So, let's open up PI Micromove. When you open PI Micromove, you immediately get a window popping up that asks what controller you want to connect with, and we need to connect with each controller individually to make sure they're working okay. Let's start with the sample XY stage controller, which should be the C867. So I'm clicking on that controller in the list of controllers, and you can see that because the driver is installed and the computer is recognizing the device, it shows up in the box on the right under the USB connection tab. Now I'm clicking connect, and we have to wait for a minute while the connection is opened. Now that we're connected, we can see there are two axes for this stage. Let's click on the first axis and then click the button that says automatic, this will tell the software that we want to automatically reference this axis. Click Start, and once it's done referencing the axis, click OK. Now do the same thing for the second axis. After the second axis is done, we can click the Close button, and PI Micromove will open individual windows for controlling each axis. We don't really care about using these, so I'm closing them and just leaving the main window open with all the connections showing. Now we have both axes connected, and here on the left-hand side, you'll see that one axis is named numeric 1, and the other axis is named numeric 2. These are the axes names that we'll need later when we set up our configuration file. We will send commands to the controller, and we need to tell the controller which axis we're addressing, and these are the names that we'll need to use. Now let's try connecting with the controller that's holding the lower objective XY and the sample Z piezo stage. That will be the E621, which is inside of a larger chassis, so you get all three axes at once. These are all piezo stages, so after you click connect, you don't need to worry about doing any referencing. Now when you initially connect, you'll probably see that all the servos are off. So make sure that all the servo boxes are checked and they are on. Okay, now let's connect with the upper objective Z stage, which is the E861 controller. So we're going to have to look for it in the list of available controllers. There it is, E861. I'm clicking connect. We're waiting for the connection. Now the first time you connect, it's a good idea to reference this stage. So I'm going to select the axis and click Automatic, and then click Start. And now it's moving the stage to try and hit the limit switch. Now that's done, so I'm clicking OK. And then we can close this window. Now on this system, when the upper objective is fully retracted for sample loading, the upper objective Z stage should be at minus 15 millimeters. So I'm moving the stage to that position now. And now we need to connect to the DC mic motors that control the sample course Z position. This is the connection that's a little different. We need to look in the list and find the C863 controller. There it is. Now initially you'll be on the USB tab, but we need to go onto the USB daisy chain tab and then select the C863 and click the Scan button. Now, it should find all three motors, so I'm going to choose the first motor and click Connect. Now, I've already done this, but the first time you connect with one of these motors, you'll be prompted with a window that allows you to set what kind of motor it is. I've already set these motors as the M227.10, and you'll want to do the same thing. Now these motors can't reference themselves, so click on the advanced button, type in a starting value of 5, click yes, click close, and now we're connected. 
Now we need to connect to the other two motors. So we go back into the new connection window and you can see that the first motor shows up as connected already. So we'll select the second motor and we'll click connect. Now it's the same process when we connect to the second motor. We also have to click advanced, type in a new starting value of five, click yes and click close. And then we'll do the same thing for the third motor. Okay, so now we've connected to all the controllers, all the servos are on, and everything shows as on target, so we are ready to go. Now if you're still setting up your system, and you want to move the sample stage stack up or down to get a good initial course Z position, go to the Tools menu and choose Move Multiple Axes. That opens up the window on the left, and you can uncheck the things you don't want to move, but we'll leave the three checked that we do want to move. Now we can type in new values. We'll type in values for all three, and then we'll click start. And now all three axes, all three DC mic motors, are going to move together. Well, if you've made it this far, all your PI stages are connected and working, and it's time to move on to the next part of this setup, which is changing the driver for the PI chassis holding the lower objective X, Y, and sample Z stages so LabVIEW can send serial commands to this unit.